welcome everybody. My name is Lenny Berry. I'm a registered nurse and a health promotion counselor here at Suburban Hospital in the Department of Community Health and Wellness. I'm excited to be here with you today and have a few minutes to talk about the importance of hydration in our life. So first of all, I wanna say, does everybody have a glass of water or a bottle of water with them so that while we're doing this, we can take sips? If not, take a second to go ahead and get that um, because that is a great way to start putting into action what we're gonna discuss. Got my water here. You could even play a game that every time I say water, you had to take a sip of water. Anyway, we're gonna make this fun. So have you had any water today? I want you to take a moment and think about how much water you've had so far and what time of the day it is. In one day, we should be having at least 64 ounces of water. And that is very uh, actually individualized to each person. So there might be specific directions you've received from your doctor that is saying not to have 64 ounces. But other than that, we should all be striving for 64 a day. Okay, anybody feeling thirsty at the moment? If you're feeling thirsty, you may already be dehydrated. So I wanna start off with a question. Did you know the average, that on average about half of our body weight is water? So we're gonna go into details of how that affects our body. But again, about half of our body weight is from water. So very vital. What is the role of water in our life? So water is, an, it's essential to human life. It forms the basis of all body fluids, including our blood and our digestive juices. Um, it's the most important nutrient to help keep the body's cells, tissues, and organs running smoothly. And on average, each day, adults lose more than 10 cups, close to two and a half quarts of water simply by sweating, breathing, and eliminating waste. We also lose electrolytes, which are minerals such as sodium, potassium, calcium, that maintain the balance of fluids in our body. Uh, so normally we can replenish what we have lost through foods and liquids we consume, even when we are very active. So what are the objectives that I'd like to discuss today? And that would be increasing our knowledge base of the role of water and hydration in our bodies, increase the knowledge base of the risks of dehydration. And I'd like to discuss some tips and strategies to prevent and treat dehydration when it happens. So why drink water? Some of the important facts about the necessity of it with our body is it helps us to lose weight, helps us to have healthy skin, fight infection, get rid of body toxins. It helps our heart to be healthy prevent joint pains and arthritis, boost our energy, prevent constipation, reduce our risk of cancer, improve productivity. It can even affect our brain function. So before we get into what dehydration is, I'd like to elaborate a little more about these effects on our body. So what percent of our brain do you think is from water? Take a minute to think about that. So we have two types of matter in our brain. We have gray matter, which is made up of 80% from water. And we have white matter, which is lipid based, but also is made up of 70% of water. So it's very important for us to be hydrated for our brain function. And it has been stated that if, our, if we're even 2% dehydrated in our brain, it can affect our short-term memory uh, temporarily. But if we have chronic dehydration, it can actually affect the size uh, and mass of our brain cells, which can affect uh, our clarity, which can lead to what some people call brain fog. So they do find in a lot of elderly people that um, with autopsy that the cell size can be decreased from prolonged dehydration. So hydrating is very important for our brain function. Also, let's think about our blood. So our blood is made up a lot of water. What percentage do you think our blood is made up of water? 
So 90% of our blood is, uh, well, the liquid portion of our blood is called plasma. And 90% of our plasma is water. And plasma makes up 50% of our blood. So water is very important for our blood. And we don't want to be dehydrated and, and have low levels of plasma where our blood is getting sticky and can lead us to a higher risk of clotting. So that's another important reason. Um, how else could it affect our body? How about with constipation? Uh, I think it's really important to know that inside of our gut and our colon, we have little receptors that are uh, pulling water in to help hydrate our stool, to keep it soft so that we do not get dehydrated and we can eliminate it. So dehydration can affect that and lead to constipation as well. So these are some of the basic uh, ways that staying hydrated can affect the quality of our day and our wellness. So let's talk a little bit about what dehydration is. So dehydration means your body does not have the adequate amount of water and fluids it needs to function properly. Dehydration can be mild, moderate, or severe based on how much of the body's fluid is lost or not replenished. When it is severe, dehydration can be a life-threatening emergency. What are some of the symptoms of dehydration? So sometimes people have thirst or a dry or sticky mouth. Increased heart rate or low blood pressure can be a sign of dehydration. Low urine output, urine that looks dark yellow, sleepiness or tiredness, muscle weakness, a headache, few or no tears, dizziness or lightheadedness, sunken eyes, lethargy or coma. That the lethargy or coma will occur with severe dehydration. But some of these symptoms happen when you're significantly dehydrated, but it also depends on the individual. Some people can be very sensitive to the level of water in their body. So you might notice some of these symptoms in yourself and, and think about when do they happen. I know just the other day I was out gardening and I was enjoying working on my gardens. It is stress management for me. I love it. It brings me joy. But when I got inside, I was really thirsty and um, I felt like my blood pressure was low. I was a little bit dizzy because of the heat and, the, and not drinking water to replace what uh, water I had lost through sweating. So remember when you're doing activities through your life, whether it's exercise or a hobby you enjoy, or even just outside at a picnic where it's hot and you're losing more of your water from your body regulating because of the heat to definitely replenish to prevent um, the dehydration. So treatment, drinking fluids is usually enough for mild dehydration. Drink small amounts of fluid often Speaking of that, let's all take a sip. Cheers. Um, so drinking small amounts of fluid often instead of large amounts all at once is ideal. This just keeps everything um, moving before uh, becoming dehydrated to a point that you then have to recover. Uh, sports drinks or electrolyte solutions are not usually necessary unless you have excessive sweating. So, you know, I remember when my kids started in sports, you know, they just started with the Gatorades and replacing drinking water with these electrolyte drinks. And what they had found is that people were overdoing it. It's really only if you're exercising to the point and for the duration that you're really sweating a lot that you need that excessive electrolyte replacement, otherwise water and eating fruits and vegetables can be sufficient. So you need to be careful because it does have extra sugar in it, those electrolyte drinks. Intravenous fluids and a hospital stay may be needed for moderate to severe dehydration. Um, your physician should try to identify and then treat the cause of the dehydration. Sometimes it can be from a stomach virus or it can be from newly diagnosed diabetes or high blood sugars can lead to a lot of fluid loss. 
So the treatment, usually fluids we can do on our own. If you notice any of the symptoms, water is the best. Um, eating foods that are very hydrating, like the fruits and vegetables. But if it is moderate or severe, you may need the doctor involved. If it is moderate or severe, what type of tests and exams would they be doing? A physical exam, definitely, and that they're going to be listening to your heart, your lungs. Um, they're going to be checking your skin, looking at your eyes, um, looking in your mouth, uh, and testing that would be include blood chemistries. They would be checking your electrolytes, and that would be especially the sodium and the potassium levels. Um, also doing a complete blood count, a CBC, a blood ure urea nitrogen, a BUN, which looks at the kidneys, as well as the creatinine, which is looking at the kidney function as well. Urinalysis and or urine specific gravity to look at the concentration of uh, your urine and other tests that may be done to determine the cause of the dehydration, for example, checking your blood sugar or ch to check for diabetes. Let's talk about prevention. Uh, drinking plenty of water before, during, and after you're active or exercising or out in the heat. Also, um, taking a container of water with you when you exercise and trying to drink at least every 15 to 20 minutes is important and that'll just keep you caught up. Uh, using a sports drink if you will be exercising for longer than an hour and especially if your workout causes excessive sweating. That is when it is appropriate. But also um, making sure that you're just having water as part of your day, not only associated with exercise, but starting first thing in the morning is a great idea. Uh, it lubricates your joints uh, because actually our joints are made up a lot of water, the, the cartilage. And when we are dehydrated, it can lead to joint pain. So if you have any arthritis or any injury, it's important to stay hydrated. So starting off our day with a glass of water to get that in the system absorbed and hydrating our joints so that we're uh, preventing injury or pain. So more prevention tips. Oops, I'm gonna go back for a second and I'm gonna ask a question. So what do you think about having a nice large uh, glass or serving of your favorite caffeinated beverage first thing in the morning? Do you think that helps hydrate you um, or could that possibly dehydrate you? We're talking about coffee, tea, or colas. I know sometimes people drink a Diet Coke in the morning or tea or coffee. So what are your thoughts on that? So there's benefits to the coffee and the tea with antioxidants that they have for us. Um, but the caffeine in all three of those can be a diuretic or make you lose water. So you want to balance it. If you want that cup of coffee or that cup of tea, um, you want to balance that with also a glass of water. So again, going back to if you wake up first thing in the morning and have your glass of water, then going down and having that cup of coffee or tea, um, it keeps it balanced so you're not starting off your day dehydrating yourself. So the first tip for prevention, use caution with coffee and colas or other drinks that can contain caffeine they may increase urine output and cause you to dehydrate faster. So again, just supplement them with water. A lot of the uh, college kids or younger kids or many people are, are also drinking now these energy drinks or taking these energy pills or uh, energy tablets and that they are thinking this is great for energy, but a lot of them have caffeine in them. And so they can, dehydrate you. So you want to keep that in mind. Avoid alcohol, including beer and wine um, in excess because they can tend to increase dehydration. Or again, mix them or alternate so that you're hydrating and, and balancing the amount of hydration out. 
Use a sports drink if you are worried about replacing minerals lost in excessive sweating. We talked about that. Stop working outdoors or exercising if you're feeling dizzy, lightheaded, or very tired. You want to go in and cool down and rehydrate. Uh, a cold compress on the back of your neck to lower the temperature, but really the hydration is important as well. Wear lightweight, light-colored clothing when you're working or exercising outdoors in the heat and humidity. Why are older adults at greater risk for becoming dehydrated? Let's think about that. Often with older adults, it's from a treatment for another condition that can lead us and put us at higher risk for dehydration. For example, somebody might be on fluid restrictions for a very important reason. Um, if you or anyone you know has congestive heart failure, this is one very common reason why people limit their fluids. And it's extremely important to follow those limitations of fluids but then that puts you at higher risk because your tank is not quite as full of the fluids, your bloodstream's not quite as full on purpose to prevent the congestive heart failure. But when you are out in the heat um, or you are uh, active or even just forget about drinking, you might find that you become dehydrated more quickly and you can have the symptoms. So it's important to be aware of that increased risk. Another risk for older is because of decreased thirst perception. So a lot of times we rely on, oh, I'm thirsty, I'm going to drink. Speaking of that, let's time for another drink of our water. Cheers. This could be a fun drinking game. Anyway, of water. Anyway, so decreasing thirst perception comes with age. So we don't want to wait until we're thirsty. We want to think of water as part of our day, a friend that we're keeping nearby that is keeping us healthy to be the best version of ourself through our day. So it's built into our day. We're not waiting for the meal or waiting until we're thirsty to have that sips and, and keeping it nearby. But we could have a decreased thirst perception as we age. Also decreased kidney function can put us at risk for dehydration. And that's another uh, reason we might be on fluid restrictions, uh, but our kidneys are the ones that filter our water and our toxins in our body. So if we're having an issue with that, um, the amount of fluid that we're drinking is gonna be affected and our hydration level will be affected. Medications, often people are put on diuretics if they have high blood pressure or if they have a history of congestive heart failure and that keeps some of that extra fluid out of our body, um, again, on purpose to reduce the pressure in between the walls of the arteries for the high blood pressure to lower that or to reduce the amount of fluid that could possibly get backed up into our lungs um, with the congestive heart failure. So the diuretics are often used for those two reasons and they can lead to putting you at higher risk for dehydration. Laxatives are used to help pull water into your gut to make the stool softer and to eliminate it. But that again is pulling water out of your bloodstream, out of your third space into your gut and eliminate it. So that can put you at a little higher risk as well. Uncontrolled diabetes. So I am also a, a diabetes educator. So I see this a lot where when people do not have control of their diabetes numbers and their numbers are high, above 200 range, um, you can have increased urination. It's a classic sign of a new onset type two diabetic when you are drink, super thirsty, drinking a lot and peeing a lot. That's a classic sign of diabetes. Or if your blood sugar, you have diabetes, but your blood sugar is running on the high range and it's out of control and you're peeing a lot. So it does cause uh, uncontrolled or increased urination, which can lead to the dehydration, which then the dehydration leads to higher blood sugar levels because then the sugar is more concentrated in the bloodstream. So it's a double negative towards uh, your diabetes management. So if you do have diabetes, you wanna stay close 
um, be very aware of this. And if your blood sugar ever is running a little high, one of the first treatments to do is actually to drink water. Let's take another opportunity to take our sip. Cheers. Okay, so again, summarizing that, if you have diabetes, super important to drink your water. If you're running high, drink water to lower it. And if you're noticing that you're peeing a lot, check your blood sugar level because it could be an indicator that your blood sugars are high. Next, greater risk with older adults is functional impairment such as and dexterity problems. So if your hands are not working as well, you might avoid opening that bottle of water or going and getting that glass of water. It can just make it more difficult, more painful, and not even intentionally, but people are less likely to be um, moving in that direction of getting more water. And another is difficulty swallowing, dysphagia. So if things are difficult to swallow, you might not be drinking a whole glass of water um, when you're eating your breakfast or your lunch or taking your pills and um, because it's difficult. So something to be aware of, of yourself, of your loved ones, and there are strategies to work with that. Maybe keeping a straw in your cup so that you can take little sips more often, these type of things. Quick and simple ways to determine if you're well hydrated. So as we're living our days right now, um, today, how do we know if we have enough fluid in our body? How do we know if we're hydrated or dehydrated? So there's a couple simple ways we can tell. Number one, monitor your urine output and notice the color. We're gonna go a little more specific into this. And then another would be assess your skin turker, pinching your hand and checking for tenting. And the third is assess for a dry tongue and or saliva in mouth. So let's go more specifically into this, the color of our urine. Simple way, we can just do our own test when you use the bathroom, you want to check and see what color your urine is. So ideally, you want to be hydrated with the colors to the far left over here. And mild hydration is, has a little tint of the yellow. Dehydrated is more a brighter yellow. And extremely dehydrated is more uh, reaching towards sort of iced tea or even an Arnold Palmer, half iced tea, half lemonade. So you wanna be almost clear with a slight tinge of yellow in it. So if you go urinate and you notice that it's dark, you drink some water, that's the best approach. If you do notice that it's dark, like the color of iced tea, you wanna start drinking your water, but you wanna really look at your, what's going on in your life and think, why is this happening? Because it could be from not drinking water, but there could be something more serious going on. So you wanna make sure that you're thinking about that and making sure it's not related to something else. Skin turgor test. Oh, back to this. If this is going on for more than a day and it's not correcting with drinking your water, contact your doctor. Skin turgor test. So if you take your hand and you pinch up the skin and it makes a tent that stays up, that's a sign of dehydration. Um, that's called your skin turgor or how quickly it goes back to shape. And in nursing at the bedside, we do this. Uh, when we do an initial assessment on a patient, when we see them first thing in our shift um, to see how hydrated they are. And so that's something you can do. If everybody wants to try that right now, take a look at your skin turgor and it should go back to its normal state. If not, drink up, cheers. Okay, some causes of dehydration, reasons that fluids may be lost um, besides not drinking enough water um, excessive sweating during activity or on a hot day while exercising. We talked about that. Excessive urine output. Why would that happen? Um, that can happen with uncontrolled diabetes, if you're on a diuretic, or if you're drinking a lot of caffeine. And a fever can also cause dehydration because our body requires water 
to help cool ourselves down when we are sick with the fever. So we can get dehydrated quickly with the fever. Vomiting and diarrhea also is a method where you are losing a lot of water quickly from your body. So you do not wanna stay in that state of a fever, vomiting and diarrhea or excessive sweating or excessive urine output for long periods of time, or you will definitely get dehydrated as well as possibly having uneven levels of or electrolyte imbalance, which can cause other more severe problems. So you wanna address this sooner rather than later. Reasons fluids may not be replaced. Um, so why wouldn't you replace if you're not, if you're dehydrated and you're vomiting and have diarrhea or a fever or these reasons, why wouldn't you just replace the fluids? Well, first of all, if you have if you're vomiting or have diarrhea, you just might not feel well enough to take in the fluids or I know we've all probably been there when we're, you can't even keep down water when you're so sick with a virus or a bacteria, it's possible that you can't even keep water down or even ice chips. So it's difficult uh, when you do have a bug. And so that could be a cause why you are unable to replace your fluids. And you might get to the point where you need to go into the hospital and get them replaced with an IV. So if you have a decrease in your thirst sensation, that's another reason why it could sneak up on you and you don't even realize um, that you're getting dehydrated. And, and so you need to be aware and think about that issue when you are sick or have any of the conditions or above that could cause you to lose your fluids. Loss of appetite due to illness, we just talked about. Nausea, you know, not able to keep anything down. You're vomiting when you have the fluids or a sore throat or mouth sores. So it sounds like, well, why wouldn't you just drink even with the sore throat or mouth sores? But you need to drink a lot, you know. Um, so it might be extremely difficult to drink the amount you need to to catch up once you're in this dehydrated state. So you need to t stay very aware of the symptoms that can come with the dehydration that you need to contact your doctor about. Which leads us to this next slide. Call your healthcare provider or 911 if any of the following symptoms do occur. Fast beating heart rate. Uh, so a normal heart rate runs at rest between 60 and 100. So if you have a heart rate at rest, meaning sitting in a chair or lying down, uh, that's above 100, that is called tachycardia. And that is, an, is an, a symptom. And it's something that can indicate that you are dehydrated. So if you have a fast beating heart, uh, you wanna let a healthcare provider know. If you're listless, that is a serious symptom. Um, and you wanna notify 911 or a healthcare provider little or no urine output in eight hours, or you cannot keep down fluids because you've been vomiting, or vomiting has gone on for longer than 24 hours in an adult, or longer than 12 hours in a child. Diarrhea lasting longer than 24 hours, um, or you are urinating much more than usual, especially if there's a family history of diabetes or you're taking diuretics. So vomiting, diarrhea, fever, all these things, you're ill. You don't want to wait too long if you're losing fluids while you're ill before contacting your doctor, especially if you have a history of diet, of diabetes or you're on diuretics. That means call them sooner than later. So outlook or prognosis, when dehydration is found and treated quickly, the outcome is usually good. So drink up, get your water, um, prevent the hydrate, dehydration from occurring, and um, that's ideal. And we want to talk about how to do that. So tips on increasing your daily intake of fluids. So drink a glass of water when you first wake up. We talked about the benefits of that for your joints, but also for your brain to jumpstart it. Um, drink a glass of water with each meal. 
and with your medication. Full glass already, that's a good system where you're just building it into your day. You don't even have to remember it. Um, and place a glass of water at your bedside or by your favorite chair. And whenever you think about it, just take a sip because it's right there and just turn it into a routine. And so that uh, you are not feeling like you're forgetting to add water in your life because it's part of your day. Time for another cheers. Okay, uh, carry a bottle of water with you to sip throughout your day. Take a sip of water or, or as you pass a, wa a water fountain. Uh, drink water before and after being outside in hot or cold weather. Choose fruit, veggies, or yogurt for snacks. These help to hydrate us. And the fruit and veggies are a natural way that we replace our electrolytes. They're full of vitamins and minerals. Um, veggies, half of the calories that we eat on our plate and in our day should be from veggies. That's for people with diabetes, trying to prevent cancer, heart healthy diet, all of us, um, veggies, 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 just watch how you eat them. You don't want to eat them fried. Uh, you want to have as many vitamins and minerals in them. So you want to store them the healthiest way in the refrigerator with no oxygen, you know, exposed to oxygen. Same with fruit. Um, fruit, we have to watch if we have diabetes, not to eat too much fruit, but fruit is loaded with antioxidants, fiber, vitamins, and minerals um, that help to keep us hydrated. And uh, we, again, with fruit, don't want to expose it to oxygen. You want to keep it um, in a bag, in a box in your refrigerator. Even though I think the sight of fruit is so beautiful on the table, that's not the best way to get the most nutrition from it. Um, and adding lemon or lime to the water for flavor, just to make it a little more fun. Um, people are drinking a lot of seltzer waters these days. They do have the bubbles in them. I would not base all of your water servings on the seltzer waters, but one or two a day is, is, is fine. Um, but just plain old water is great too. And uh, I just wanna say thank you so much for your attention. I hope everybody has finished at least a cup of water during this talk and has learned a couple things about uh, what dehydration is, how to prevent and treat dehydration, and tips and strategies to stay hydrated. Thank you so much. Have a great day.